In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to copy Mew Mew's rosette leather pouch bag. Um, bright colours are pretty big this season, as I'm sure you know. And the Mew Mew bags, they're kind of quite arty, and I've seen them in quite a few places and in quite a few magazines, so that's why I'm going to attempt them for my next project. So first of all, you want to make a pattern for the yellow and black um, applique bits. Well, we're not appliquing them, wiggling them. Um, so you want to get your bag and just measure out, make absolutely sure that uh, you've got the right length on paper for, I'm doing this for the bottom, so here and here and the top is, will be here and here. And I'm using a pattern master, you can use a graded set square. I'm not even sure that either is essential, I just use this for the sake of speed and because I'm used to using them. And I measured out four and a half centimetres for the top section. I'm going to measure out a bit there. For the bottom section, going to measure out, just checking with this, guesstimate that as about three centimetres because we can always go under. Then you want to fold them in half so that you can get, you can cut a sort of pattern for them that is completely symmetrical. So I'm folding this over. In fact, it might be better advised for me to do that. Reference that fold there. out with some paper scissors, not fabric ones. And just referencing the original, which thankfully I have close to hand, we just basically want to um, do a mirroring image. Well, you can be quite creative with this one, you don't absolutely have to do a replica, but make sure you just go up to the edge. Now our shape's nice and consistent. This is for the black outside bit, by the way. Um, the other bit is, the yellow bit is just, the pattern's going to be exactly the same, but with, um, but five millimetres smaller at the top. When it's folded in half, make sure you completely align it, and which I haven't done here, I hasten to add. That's better. Cut it out with your scissors. So that's our bottom bit. So you've got that bit there. there, which we just have to snip away here. 
However, though I say it myself, it otherwise worked out quite nicely. So I'll just snip them. The next part, you are going to trace these lines. And by the way, this is using a clutch pencil. I just prefer it for accuracy, really. Keeping out your black pattern. It's good to mark this with a Y for yellow so that we know that we're going to make it five millimeters smaller around the edge. You then want to repeat the process with this top bit. Then you want to take your pattern master or graded set square, um, anything that has measurements um, away from the edge in centimeters, just straight lines. Um, What's quite cool about this, um, which by the way I got from More Plan, I don't know if they still sell them because I got this in something ridiculous like 2004, um, but they would be, these are worth their weight in gold because they've got curved lines that you can uh, measure five millimeters, actually up to a centimeter from. So just trace along that. When you finish doing that, I'm actually going to use a scalpel for this and I'm going to cut from the inside because that will be easier to trace onto the actual leather. Our leather panel, I picked up this upholstery leather uh, from eBay, it was about five pounds, um, and I'm just going to paint it. Um, you can strike it lucky finding leather, I'd recommend looking through leather off-cut bins and leather shops, but if you can't find the right colours, and there's a high likelihood you mightn't, um, this will do. So I'm using fabric paint. Um, I personally recommend paints by Dylon and they're about three pounds. And make sure that they're opaque, meant for opaque fabrics, even if your fabric is pale, because they've just got more texture to them and yeah, more opacity. See they're just kind of thicker. And then you just want to trace around your pieces and cut them out.
And after you've cut your pieces out of the scalpel, um, I trace my black pieces on the wrong side of the fabric because the fabric's white. Um, cut them out of the scalpel and you should have something that looks like these. Final things that we need to make for uh, applique, well, gluing, are the black leaves, <coughs> which are pretty easy, and the rows. Now the rows I'm going to cut, it's only small, so I'm going to cut some triangles. Let's start with two. And what we're going to, just to let you know in advance, is that I'm going to fold that over that and make something like that. Maybe with some folding in the center, just to look authentically like the original. Now for this I think pins will probably be best. So I'm going to pin that there. Pin that there. We want to pin that there. And if you can see, I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on the camera, but our row shape is starting to show. Well, certainly once we cut a kind of round opening around it, it will do. So I'm just going to pin that there. And that's where this baby comes in contact adhesive and with that I like to use a palette knife and the reason why I pinned is just so that we know where to put it really pretty self-explanatory um, this I got from B&Q I think it's about six pounds but you can buy it in tube form uh, for about two pounds I just like it in a pot The thing with contact adhesive is you have to be quite patient with it because you have to leave it for sort of 10, 15 minutes or so for it to go tacky and only then do you sort of uh, press the two sides that you're sticking together. But it is worth it because it's pretty strong. Certainly it, it has yet to fail me. Touch wood. Then you want to just, as you can see, I've just stuck those down um, after leaving it for 10 minutes. 
they're about. So I just want to stick this down here, again repeating the procedure, the glue underneath there, and I want to put that along there, so I'm just going to put glue on both sides. Finally, you just want to cut around your your rows to form a circular form a circular shape, like so. And then I'm going to just cut out the two black leaves. Now, for the next part, you need a seam ripper because we're going to cut the front. And for that, you just need to detach your lining, like so. And then when you've done picture lining, just turn it inside out. Or alternatively, you can just cut through it. We are now going to um, make a small hole for the rose. As you can see, I've just traced out how big I want to make it and put leaves. So we're just going to mark that on, mark out where we're going to uh, cut it. The next part is to. Um, just decide where you're going to place your rows. Now, you want to make absolutely sure that it's not going to clash with your borders. That's why I've just lined that up there. Maybe move that further down still. And then using your pen, you want to just mark out there. There. Just around the edge, basically. Your rows. Then when you're satisfied and you've got your positioning right, just cut your bit out. Finally, you just want to glue the edges on both sides, again with your contact adhesive. Once your rose is glued in place, you simply want to glue down the zip and lining is normal.